Number 29. An 1100 kilogram car pulls a boat on a trailer. Letter A. What total force resists the motion of the car, boat, and trailer if the car exerts a 1900 newton force on the road and produces an acceleration of 0.55 meters per second squared? The mass of the boat plus the trailer is 700 kilograms. All right, so take a look over here, guys. I draw a little uh, picture. Here's the car, all right? It weighs 1,100 kilograms. Here's the trailer and the boat, all right? And the total mass of them is 700 kilograms. So this system, the overall system, right, is experiencing an acceleration. Uh, let's assume that it's in the right-handed direction, all right? So I'll put a little arrow up here. So the acceleration they told us is going to be 0.5 five zero meters per second squared and um, it now asks us right to what's the total force that resists this whole system right it's asking what uh, what force resists the motion of the car boat and trailer so since it told me all of that I'm looking at this whole thing as one whole system okay so what that means is I have to look at everything as a whole and take the masses into account as a whole as well. Okay, so let's draw a little free body diagram here. I'll label this letter A. All right, so pretend that this point right here in the middle um, is, is detailing the entire system. All right, now it says that the car is uh, producing a force right on the road of 1900 newtons. Now remember that that force, the wheels of the car here are pushing back on the road okay but don't draw your vector pointing backwards because that would be incorrect the the way you have to think about it is the car is exerting a force on the road backwards but then but that's the force uh, um, imparted to the road by the car I'm interested in the forces on the car or on the system right so since the uh, car pushes back on the road with 1900 newtons of force according to Newton's third law the road then pushes back on the car in the equal but opposite direction. And that's the force I'm concerned about, the force on the system. So the road is producing the force on the system. All right. So the 1900 newtons is pointed to the right. So that's 1900. All right. There's some force resisting the motion, it tells us. So obviously, remember, forces resisting motion always point in the opposite direction. The vector should be smaller, right? I'll call this the force of friction. How do I know that? Because remember, there's a net acceleration pointing uh, to the right here. Okay, so just to reiterate, this acceleration is 0 0.550 meters per second squared. Uh, wonderful. And now we have to take the total mass into account, right? So let's just start plugging this into our formula. So the sum of the force in the x direction should equal the mass of the entire system uh, multiplied by the acceleration in the x direction. So we have 1900, that's positive because it's pointing to the right, then net minus right, because the force of friction is pointing to the left, minus F sub F, is equal to now the total mass. So the total mass would be 1,100, sorry, 1,100 kilograms uh, for the car, <clears throat> excuse me, and then 700 uh, kilograms for the boat and the trailer, all multiplied by 0 0.550. All right, so let's just clean it up. So we're going to have 1,900, all right, I'll just do this in steps, minus the force of friction, this will now equal, obviously, 1,800, right, times 0 0.55. And now, all I'm gonna do here is subtract this on over, minus 1,900. Okay, so that would be negative force of friction is going to equal 1,800 times 0 0.55, then minus 1,900. And it comes out to negative 910, right, negative 910, and now, right, the Double negatives would cancel, so now it would just be the force of friction is equal to 910 newtons. And there's your force of friction. Now, I remember saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Andrew. Um, this value is positive here, but the vector is pointing to the left-hand side. Did you make a sign mistake somewhere? No, I didn't. Um, it should come out positive here. I'll, uh, do you know the reason why? Well, the reason why is because if you look at how I plugged in my force of friction here in the equation, how did I plug it in? I plugged it in as a negative already, right? Because I know it's pointing to the left. So what that means is since I already took its uh, sign into account, the force of friction itself here, not including the sign, should be positive, right? Because the negative, well, I almost looks like an equal sign, but the negative here of a positive number would be 
negative overall. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you instead added this in the problem, you would have found then that your uh, force would have come out to be negative. That might have made them more sense in terms of the picture, but it really doesn't matter. All right, you're just, if you do it that way, you're saving the negative for the end. And this particular way, I'm taking it into account at the beginning. All right, so uh, now uh, that's, that's it for A. <laughs> so let's go on to B. So letter B, let's take a read. So it says, what is the force in the hitch between the car and the trailer? Okay, if 80% of the resisting forces are experienced by the boat and the trailer. So basically, what are they talking about? They want us to they want us to focus on this hitch between the car and the trailer. All right. Now you can approach this problem in one of two ways. Okay, it depends on how you outline the system of interest. How I'm going to take this, and it's a little bit of a faster way, is I'm only going to look at it from the perspective of the trailer and the boat. That's it. Another Another way to take it is to look at the system as a whole and detail each of these two parts of the system individually. Okay, um, so let me first take the former approach. So we have our axis and uh, this little dot here will rep represent the boat and the trailer. So first it tells me that 80% of the forces um, that are resisting the motion, right, are experienced by the boat and the trailer. Okay, so um, if I had to find that value, how do we do that? Well, it's simply the total resistive forces that we just found, the 910, right? So 910 multiplied by 80% or 0.80. Okay, and what does that work out to be? So 910 times 0 0.8 is 728. So this would be 728 newtons pointing to the left, resisting the motion. Now, there is some tension, right? There's a hitch here, okay? And there's a car here that's pulling the trailer and the boat to the right. So there's some tension or some force applied, whatever the heck you want to call it. It doesn't matter. You could call it the applied force. You could call it tension because we're talking about a hitch here. It's kind of like a string, right? I mean, it's not a string. It's a chain, but you understand what I'm saying. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it the tension force. Okay. Now that should be, if you think about it, this should be greater, right? I'll call it T. Uh, it should be greater, though, than the resistive force. How do I know that? Well, the darn thing is moving to the right, correct? Remember, this this trailer and boat are still experiencing an acceleration in the right-handed uh, direction of that value. So I know this should be larger, okay? So again, if I get a number that's smaller, that's a problem. If I get a number that's larger, doesn't mean I'm right, but it means I'm on the right track. Then you just got to make sure you didn't make a silly mistake with your math. So uh, looks like, uh, did I miss anything? Oh, and then I really didn't, but in terms of then I would just have to detail the mass, right, of the system of interest, but that I'll do in a second. So now we'll take the sum of the forces in the x direction should equal the mass of the object in question or the system in question multiplied by the acceleration in that same direction. So here we have a tensional force, okay, and that's positive, minus then the 728, because that's in the uh, negative x direction. The mass now of the system, remember, I'm just taking the boat and the trail into account, so that's 700, and the acceleration was the same, positive uh, 0.550. So now, multiply that together, then add the 728 on over 728, and we should get the tensional force to be, let's see, 700 times 0.55 plus 728, and look at that. We get a value of 1.11 times 10 raised to the third, third newtons. And again, like I said, it should be greater than the 728, which it is. All right, so that does make sense. All right, so if what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to detail the second method, okay? Um, just in case for those of you who might be curious, um, you can follow along with that. If not, you know, feel free, to, feel free to shut the video off at this particular point. But just remember to subscribe. Okay, in any case, second method here would be uh, same thing in terms of the, uh, in terms of the, the boat and the trailer. Okay, the boat and the trailer here, when I draw my free body diagram, we still have the 728 newton, of, uh, newton force, okay, pointing to the left, and we then still have a force of tension, okay, pointing to the right. Fine. Then, we also now are going to detail the car separately, okay? So what's going on with the car here? Well, remember, the car is applying a 1,900 Newton force to the road. 
And then therefore that road is imparting a 1900 Newton force on the car. And which way is that pointing? It's pointing in the same direction we had before, right? Right here, 1900 Newtons, okay? So it's gonna be pointing to the right. So this is 1900 Newtons, all right? And now here's the thing. You might say, okay, that's great, that's all, but it's not. Because there also is a tensional force pointing back towards the uh, boat and the trailer. You might say, well, wait a minute, why is that? Why, why, why am I gonna draw that in? Remember Newton's third law, right? The car is pulling, the, the car here, let me go back to my picture, guys. The car here is pulling, tugging on the trailer, right? But that's only half the story. The boat and trailer are also tugging on the car, right? Newton's third law, okay? So what that means is I have these two tensional forces. And it's not really two, but they're the same tensional force, but it looks like there are two, okay? So now remember, this overall system both, well, not overall, I'm looking at them individually. So remember that this system experiences an acceleration. So we have that this is a, oop, sorry. This is acceleration is equal to 0 0.550. And same thing here, a is equal to 0 0.550. So now, and that's both in the same direction, right? Whoops, sorry. So now that's both in the same direction. Now here's the thing. Let's create both uh, equations for both systems, all right? So I'll, I'll detail this one as, uh, so, ooh, what am I doing? Some of the forces, sorry, in the x direction, let's say of the uh, boat and trailer, I'll just call it B, okay, is equal to the mass of the boat and trailer times the acceleration of the boat and the trailer, right? So what does this formula work out to be? So it's simply, T, that's positive because it's pointing to the right, minus 728 is equal to 700 times AB, right? Or I should say A sub B. Okay, so that's for the boat and the trailer. Next, I would have, let me detail then um, <clears throat> for the car. So the sum of the forces in the X direction for the car is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car, right? So what are these forces now for the car? Remember, this is the car and this is the boat and the trailer. So we have 1900, which is positive, minus T now. All right, is gonna be equal to then the mass of that car, which was, where was it, 1100, times the acceleration, right? Which we know to be, um, what do you call it, 5.55, okay? But what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna leave it as a C for now, all right? The reason being is because what I realize here is I have two equations, I don't have two unknowns, but I do know that these two things are equal to one another. The acceleration of the boat, and the acceleration of the car. So what can you do? Well, you can solve one of these two equations for the acceleration. So for example, if I were to solve the bottom one for the acceleration, it would be something like this. I'm just gonna call it A now, right? Because they're both the same. So this would be 1900 minus T divided by 1100. And then what you can do, Right, you can solve this one also. Eh, you know, it might be even easier. Well, no, it doesn't really matter. So let's just take this value and uh, plug it into the acceleration here, okay? I'll give you the overall equation and then you'll do the math, all right? But it will come out to be the same, all right? Just so I uh, can move on to the next video for you guys. So uh, my handwriting is a little sloppy there at the bottom, I apologize. All right, so here's the equation. So I'm gonna rewrite this one. All right, so we got, uh, where should I put it? I'll put it right above. I'll put it in uh, red. So we have T minus uh, 728 equals 700 times now, instead of the A sub B, we're gonna substitute this whole thing in. 1900 minus T over 1100. And now if you solve for T, guess what you're gonna get? You're going to get the same value of 1.11 times 10 to the third newtons, okay? Should come out exactly the same. If it's off by a slight, slight little margin, it's because of the rounding somewhere, all right? But it should all work out the same. So practice that on your own, guys, but you should be aware of both cases. Again, it's almost a different problem depending upon if uh, we frame it, meaning if we frame it just in terms of the boat or the boat and the car, right? If your professor wants you to uh, detail both systems and try to create an equation detailing both, we ain't gonna have to do it that way. But obviously, uh, this particular method right here is a lot easier. 
It's a lot shorter. All right. But guys, listen, thanks for tuning in. I really, really do hope this helps. Okay. Um, please give us a hand by hitting that subscribe button. That would be great. Um, also gives us a lot of motivation. It's pretty cool. Right now we're at about like 20 subscribers. We're both going a little crazy, which is cool. All right. I, I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, uh, but it definitely is to us. It means that we are um, able to connect with you guys and uh, we are able to help you. So again, thank you guys so very much. And I look forward to uh, helping you in the next lesson.